What's going on, everybody? It is Friday, May 4th. I should probably make one of those May the 4th be with you jokes, but I've never seen Star Wars, so I don't. I can't help you guys out there. Uh, 15 games today. Huge slate. It's kind of crazy. And we talked a little bit before the show about how there's a lot of balance at the pitching spot. So this is going to be a pretty interesting one for us. Jake, how's it going? It's going well. Uh, going to be a project to try to pitch out or figure out pitching today. Uh, I love a ton of hitters, but not a lot that I'm in love with for pitching outside of the two obvious guys, I would say, uh, Berrios and Garrett Cole. Um, so looking for my Mike Miner for today. <laughs> Who will be my Mike Miner? I guess we should give a shout out today to Chris um, for getting a dong last night, making the call correctly. I, I'm not happy about it. <laughs> yeah, what was it? What's the guy's first name? Daniel or David Daniel. Palco? Yeah. Daniel Palco. Un- ridiculous. Yeah. He's just absolutely ridiculous. Chris is really on a roll, so. He's going to, oh God, he's going to, he's not going to shut up about it tonight. I hope you're listening to this, Chris. I wouldn't either if I was him. Yeah, that's true. Uh, no, I, I mean, he's the king of the dongs right now. He is. Lucky him. You ready to get started? Yeah, let's do this. All right, let's crack the old back. We got a lot to talk about. <sighs> Alrighty, first game up, Yankees and Indians. Yankees, six-run implied total. Indians, 4.5. It's a 64% chance to win for the Yankees. CC Sabathia going for New York. Josh Tomlin going for Cleveland. Um, Tomlin is without question a no play here. And uh, I don't really see CC Sabathia as anything that I would really want to have tonight. Would you agree? I agree. I am not on either of the pitchers. Sabathia has been good at limiting hard contact later in his career. And... He's got the Yankees bullpen behind him, so not the best um, idea to stack Indians, I don't think, here. But I do like Ramirez and Lindor, maybe Edwin Encarnacion, all individually as one-offs. Just like that matchup against Sabathia. And then Tomlin on the other side is just getting pounded by righties. Um, Over 40% hard contact against them. Over 90 miles an hour average exit velocity. And... Now you get to go and face Aaron Judge, Gary Sanchez, and John Carlos Stanton, who all can pound righties. Like it just seems like one of the worst matchups in the league for Tomlin, and the team total reflects that. So the Yankees are going to be chalk, but I like them all the way through Miguel and Jar. Um, so I I love them all. Yeah, Yankees are going to be super chalk. Six-run implied total is the highest by far. It's like a Coors game almost. Uh, they have, they're have, they scheduled for 0.9, almost a full run more than the second most team. And everyone plays today, so that's really, really crazy. They're going to be very popular. Uh, I do like the top part of a Yankees lineup. So Gardner, Judge, Stanton, um, Sanchez, uh, I'm in for all of that. I don't love Gregorius's price. But if he's part of this stack and getting that lefty-righty matchup, I'm all for it. Uh, I'm with you. I'd go all the way down to Anyhar and be more than okay with it. And, uh, and people are going to do that for sure. Yeah. I think Anyhar is one of my favorite third basemen, actually. He's been hitting righties very well. And batting seventh, it's like the Luis Valbuena thing where just because he's batting seventh, people don't want to play him and they want to play guys in the top five or six and – He'll probably get left out of a lot of Yankee stacks. I think that's a mistake. Uh, I would agree. Uh, Indians-wise, I'm, I'm relatively indifferent. Uh, Lindor, Ramirez, and Carnacion are all fine. I don't mind the pricing. They're 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 cheap enough on DK that I like it. Like Kipnis is the same price on both sites. Uh, Lindor is only two hundred dollars cheaper. So the pricing on FanDuel isn't the best. I probably won't end up with a ton of Indians, which I'm pretty happy about after last night. Yeah, and just another point to the Yankee stack: it is about as good of hitting weather as you can have. Eighty-one degrees at game time and thirteen mile an hour winds blowing out to 
left left center. Tomlin gives up a bunch of pulled balls and balls hit the center. Um, and like it just sets up so well for all these Yankees. They're they're gonna be chalk, right? Like probably like in the twenty percent. They'll be even on a huge slate. Um like they'll be I expect them to be the most owned. I don't expect them to be like I don't know. Chalk is going to be a weird thing today. I don't think there's going to be a ton of it from like the traditional sense. I don't think they'll be far and away. They'll be the most owned team, but I don't think it'll matter all that much. Okay. Yeah. I mean, as long as they're not like forty percent. I don't think that's on a even on a fifteen. Today. Yeah. I mean, in the low dollar stuff for sure, they they won't be forty percent because no one really usually gets there on a on a big slate. Yeah. But um, if they're like. 20, 25, I, I think it's the best spot of the night. Um, so, yeah. I, like, there's no way I'm, I'm intentionally fading the Yankees. If you had a bunch of lineups, yeah, you can make some with no Yankees and just hope they bomb. But, it, like, this is one of the best spots of the year, I think, so far. Yeah, I, the six-run implied total is just insane. Yeah. All righty, next up, Nats and Phillies. Nationals 4.5 run implied total. Phillies 4.2. Uh, it's a 53% chance to win for the Nats. Gio Gonzalez going for Washington. Nick Pavetta going for Philly. Uh, not a big fan of Gio tonight. Don't like the price. Don't like the matchup. He's not a guy that I'm going to really have at all. Uh, Pavetta is fine. Um, he's just sort of in this mass of middle tier guys. I'll have him in a couple lineups, but he's not anybody that I'm like prioritizing or anything. Um, where you stand on these guys. Yeah, again, not really looking to target uh, either guy here on DK. Pavetta, 7,500. Gio Gonzalez, 10-2. Um, it's more great hitting weather. 82 miles an hour wind blowing out to right. So Pavetta is sort of off the table for me with Bryce Harper and Matt Adams, who is just red hot, um, just hitting righties. It seems like he's hitting a home run like every day. Um, I think he is, <laughs> dude. Yeah, it's like I follow the, the barrel or whatever on Twitter, and he's just seems like every day Matt Adams is coming up. It's like a personal uh, account. Yeah, like so whatever. I mean, no no pitching for me here. Even though Pavetta has been awesome against righties, like just looking at his numbers, like no hard contact, thirty two point eight percent K rate against righties. Um. If it was worse hitting weather, I would probably consider Pavetta on this slate, but even at that discounted price, I don't think I can do it. Yeah, it's. I'll probably have Pavetta in like four or five lineups out of 150. I'd much rather yeah. have the hitting here. Yeah, I mean, so Bryce Harper, of course, yeah. um, and then Matt Adams for me, the, the two lefties in the top of the Nats order. Um, and then I like two guys on the Philly side, uh, Al Fair and Reese Hoskins. So it's a pretty simple game for me. Two hitters on both sides that I like and none of the pitchers. Yeah, I like I like a Nats stack. I'd be fine with Trey Turner and Ryan Zimmerman, um, along with Harper and Adams. And then on the Philly side, I'd, I'd be fine going anywhere in their top five. I don't really – I'm not too, too worried about Geo. And, like, Hernandez, Hoskins, Altair, and Santana all can hit from the right side. So it's really just Odebel Herrera in the middle that would be, like, I'd be happy to leave him off and just use Hernandez, Hoskins, Altair, and Santana. I'll have a little bit of the Phillies. Nothing too crazy. Um, there's just too much other stuff out there. It's going to be a lot of, like, these guys are fine for a couple type lineups. Yeah. I, I don't really, I don't know. This is kind of like a nothing game for me. Me too. All righty, on to the next one. Mets and Rockies. I wish this game was in cores. Uh, Mets, 4.1 run implied total. Rockies, 3.9. 52% chance to win for the Mets. It's Zach Wheeler going for New York. German Marquez going for Colorado. Um, I like Wheeler here. I kind of like Marquez here, too, actually. Um, these are two guys that I'll actually have a little bit of. FanDuel, they're only separated by $100, whereas on DK, they're separated by $900. Um, 
they'll be like a pay down option for me. And then Wheeler on DK, I think, is a really nice option as a second starter. Yeah, I, I'm a little bit torn on what to do with Wheeler. Like, he's looked good in two starts. He's looked okay in two of them. Uh, it's a good price for him, 7100 I could certainly see him pitching well. We have more great hitting weather, which I'm a little concerned about. Um, but, yeah, like, outside of Blackman and maybe Dahl, I don't really fear this Rockies lineup outside of Coors. So, good run total. Wheeler has looked okay. Um, shown some, some strikeout stuff. Um, he's certainly a guy I'm going to consider for 7,100. Yeah, I don't... This game's a weird one. There is rain scheduled. Um, for, oh, is there? Like, you know, it's drizzly 31 percent chance of rain from six o'clock to nine o'clock so it might just be like an ugly game i don't really know what to make of that implied total super low uh i don't hit like hitting is not really a spot that i'm looking at outside of cargo um 20, cargo only 2500 on fanduel that's just a crazy price well, 2500 you said yeah man yeah. That's pretty crazy. He'll pop up a decent amount as a one-off outfield bet. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, no issue with that at all. No, but I, I won't really have any hitting here. It'll probably just be like relatively low-ish exposure to Wheeler and Marquez. Um, do you like any of the Mets? Uh, Brandon Nimmo and Conforto, I guess, but not really. Yeah, I like the, the four top lefties so and then you can mix in Cespedes if you have four outfield spots to work with but that's the problem I have with the Mets stack is that Nimmo, Conforto, Cespedes and Bruce are all outfield fielders yeah. so you can't full stack them on DK even if you wanted to yeah that's rough uh, so like I mean I would put my priorities on Conforto and Bruce just because they have big power but Cabrera for 4K. No one's going to play him, and I think it's a uh, it's a pretty good matchup. Okay, I'm with you. Yeah, Conforto's not bad. His price on DK is pretty nice. He's only two hundred dollars cheaper on FanDuel, so he doesn't grade out as well for me. Yeah. Alrighty, Rays and Blue Jays. Rays 3.6 run implied total. Blue Jays 4.4. It's a 58 percent chance to win for the Blue Jays. Uh, Andrew Kittredge going for Tampa. J.A. Happ going for Toronto. Uh, Happ is probably my favorite guy on FanDuel. Uh, it's a toss-up between him and Berrios right now. Uh, Kittredge, not a guy that I'm looking at at all on FanDuel, but um, he's not really a guy that I'm looking at at all. I, I thought that he was available as a guy on DK as a second starter. We dug into his uh, game logs before we started here. I don't think he's going to throw enough innings to really be relevant from a fantasy perspective. So, J.A. Happ is the only guy here for me. Yeah, Kittredge just um, – he's not one of, he's not a, a Barria guy like last night where he's got a chance to go five or six innings, at least from, from what he's done so far. So, I wouldn't try to put him in my lineup. Um, he's, he's just sort of a guy I'm going to cross off. Um, Happ has been – like he's been awesome. Like there's no there's no way around it. Uh, swinging strike rate looks awesome. The Rays have the second highest O swing percentage over the last two weeks. They're overall like a probably a neutral matchup against lefties just from looking at some of their stuff as a team. Um, no issue going back to half, but on DK he's 11-7, and I think if I'm going up all the way, I'm gonna go up all the way to Garrett Cole. So. That's the only, I mean, I don't have a problem with Hap. I think he probably pitches really well here, but I'd rather take the huge upside with Garrett Cole. No, that makes sense. Uh, Hap is $700 cheaper than Cole on DK. It's $1,500 on FanDuel. Yeah. So it's more of a price thing than anything else. If Hap were priced at like 10000 or something and that gap narrowed, mm -hmm. I'd be more likely to be looking uh, elsewhere. But he's in a really nice spot from a price perspective here. Yeah. Uh, hitter wise, not really the spot for me. Um, 
I mean, I guess Granderson leading off at 3,200 on FanDuel is fine as like a one-off play, but I don't like either of these teams really on either site. Yeah, and then, so I didn't see yesterday because um, I missed the early slate, and then I, the Blue Jays played twice yesterday, right? They played that the back-to-back doubleheader. Yeah, Donaldson's so, back. Yeah, Donaldson's back, and I, I noticed that as I was going through the night shift. Um, played really well, too. So, yeah, um, he's 5K. It's not a great park, but um, he's healthy. You could make a case for the Blue Jays stack, but I don't like that smokes out. Um, so I'll probably just not have many bats from this game, if any. Yeah, I won't have anything uh, here. Yeah, like you said, Granderson probably would be my guy, but that's about it. Same. It's just an uneventful game, except for J.A. Hat for me. Yeah. All right, Reds and Marlins. Uh, Reds, 4.7 run implied total. Marlins, 4.5. It's a 52% chance to win for the Reds. Um, Sal Romano going for Cincinnati. We and Chen uh, going for Miami. Um, not going to have either of these guys from a pitching perspective. Just full stop, not going to have them. I'll be more on the hitting here. I assume you're not getting... Uh, any major exposure to Sal Romano or Wei Yin no. Chen? No, Romano, uh, I read this off last night, but over his last three games, just looking at his swinging strike game logs, 5.1%, 3.1%, and 1.1% swinging strike percentage. Uh, he's at 4.5% on the season, so I just absolutely cannot go there. Marlins don't strike out really any, anyways. Um, so, no Romano, no Wei and Chen for me. I think I like Bohr. I like Real Muto. I don't, I don't like Real Muto's price on DK. Um, and then Suarez and Duvall are the two power righties that I like for the Reds. Yeah, I'll, I'll actually have probably a little bit more than most here. Uh, I think the Marlins look great on FanDuel. Real Muto's price is, is, is fine for me on FanDuel. Dietrich is 2400 Castro, 2800 Justin Bauer, 2,900. Brian Anderson, 2,900. Uh, I can get to a very cheap Marlins stack. So in lines that have probably Garrett Cole, I think the Marlins will come along for the ride there uh, and work out really well. Uh, Marlins are a, a really nice uh, pay down stack for me tonight. 4.5 run implied total is you know, more than acceptable. Sal Romano, not a guy you're super worried about. So I'd be happy to take a, a cheapo run at the Marlins. And then I like the Reds as well. Um, you know, Peraza has a really nice price, 3400 on FanDuel. Adam Duvall, I uh, wrote him up, didn't go well, but 2800 on FanDuel. He's a guy, again, that I'll try to take advantage of that lefty-righty matchup. Um, you know, Votto will probably be, like, really low-owned tonight in a situation where he probably shouldn't be. I don't care about mm. the lefty-lefty matchup all that much in this scenario. Um because with so many games, like no one's going to be on Joey Votto on a one-off and a lefty-lefty, so he might be on less than he should be from like a general math standpoint. Um, I can get to a little bit of a red stack. I'd probably be more likely to have part of the Marlins, as weird as that sounds to me. But yeah, no pitching. That's basically the only tenet from this game. If you want to stack it up from a hitting perspective, be my guest. Yeah, that's. I mean, the Marlins are going to put the ball in play, yeah. so that's they're super cheap. Ball's going to be in play, and Sal Romano is not immune to giving up hard hits. So no. uh, I, I don't mind it at all on FanDuel with some of those prices you read off. like It makes sense as a, a filler stack if you want to get in the Yankees because Marlins are going to be, like what, 3% owned, if yeah. that. Like, yeah, at best. There, no one's going to play There won't them. be much at all. Yeah, yeah I get it. It's a good, really good park, too. Real so. Muto is the only guy over 3,000 on FanDuel. Like yeah. You can just you can make whatever you want there, and then roster whoever you want as your other stack, and whoever you want at pitching, and yeah, you'll be fine. So, yeah. So I don't mind that. Okay. Uh, Braves and Giants. Braves four point seven run implied total. Giants four point one. It's fifty six percent chance to win for the Braves. Fulty going for Atlanta. Chris Stratton going for San Fran. Um, I don't want Stratton. 
at all. Uh, Fulty looks pretty good, 8,100 on FanDuel. I don't love him as much on DK at 9,400. I'd rather either go up slightly to Barrios or down slightly to Bueller. He's kind of in a weird middle ground there. Uh, but, you know, he's a guy that can miss bats. I'm not terribly worried about the Giants lineup. 4.1 run implied total for the Giants is nothing to write home about. So I'll probably have a little bit of him. Um, it'll give me something to cheer for, give me a game to watch. For once, I actually like the Braves tonight. You should, yeah. yeah. Um, Stratton is not what he showed his first few starts. I uh, just was kind of surviving, getting pretty lucky, I think. Uh, sort of came back crashing down to earth last start six earned runs and an inning in a third. And I think he's closer to that than what he was doing earlier in the season. So he's not really going to, he's not a threat to strike out a bunch of guys in this matchup. No. Uh, Acuna and Freeman and Ozzy Albies all crushed yesterday. They're all crushing lately. So is Kurt Suzuki. Uh, so I like the brave stack too. Well, nice. That makes me happy. Yeah. Yeah, Albies, Acuna, Freeman, Marquecas. I'm in. I'm in there. I hate Marquecas just in general, but I'll take it. Um, but Acuna's just. I'm in for him, man. I'm excited for the future. Yeah, yeah Albies at the top. I hope that's a long-standing thing. I, it should be. Yeah, it, it, it better be. And then Freeman batting trouble. behind them. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, obviously you know Freddie Freeman doesn't. I don't need to say anything about him. Everybody knows he's incredible yeah um like a brave stack tonight i could get to a, like a sneaky giant stack if you wanted to um gregor blanco only 2300 on fanduel 2600 on dk uh I, you know i'd take a shot there if he's part of a stack get brandon belt get brandon crawford kind of hope for like a bunch of guys getting on and moving around i don't love it it wouldn't be something i would want to have a bunch of but you know i could see a one or two like you know one or two lines of giants I like Fultonavich here. Uh, before I saw the price, I thought he'd be priced in his <laughs> usual range, like seventy-five to eight thousand. Um, but he, he's ninety-four hundred on DK, and that makes it tough for me. Uh, there are guys that I like for a lot cheaper, and then like Barrios for ninety-eight hundred is. I'd rather go there against a team he just dominated a few weeks ago. So probably won't get to Fultonavich, but. I think he probably pitches pretty well here. He looks pretty good to me. Yeah. I hope he pitches well. Yeah. Go Braves. Rangers and Red Sox. Rangers, 3.9 run implied total. Red Sox, 5.1. 62% chance to win for the Red Sox. Bartolo Colon going for Texas. Rick Porcello going for Boston. Uh, I'm just going to go all in on Colon. What do you think? Yeah, I think that's that's definitely the play tonight. Forty eight hundred on DK. Um, no, nah, Cologne, he's gonna have a, a really rough time. I think if the Yankees aren't the number one stack tonight, I don't know how the Red Sox aren't number one. I mean, that's definitely one and two for me. Like pricing is a whole different thing. They're super priced up, but like they're. If the Yankees are going to be super chalk and the Red Sox are going to be half their ownership, then I'll make that pivot. Yep. Because this is almost as good of a spot. These are two of the best spots I think we've seen all season on the same night. What's higher, Bartolo Colon's price or his daily caloric intake? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, 4,800. Yeah, he probably eats that in a day, 4,800. So he probably gets to 5,000. Uh, Porcello, not a guy that I'm really going to prioritize. Don't love the price. Um, you know, le- a lot of lefty bats in the Rangers lineup kind of give me some pause. Uh, Red Sox bats will be the spot that I'm really looking at here. Betts and Benintendi in particular at the top are grading out really nicely for me. Uh, Hanley looks pretty good. Uh, JD Martinez looks pretty good. Um... You know, if you want to use Devers or Nunez, I don't really have any problems there. More so on DK than anything else. Uh, yeah. Red Sox just, you know, really nice spot. 5.1 run implied total. Uh, it's basically the second highest on the slate. So you want to get some of those guys. Cologne, not the guy to fear. 
Yeah, so we talked about, or I, I talked about yesterday, like why I wanted to use Mike Miner because of the Red Sox numbers against lefties just weren't very impressive to start the year. Um, against righties, it is a completely different story, which is kind of weird. Probably should balance out at some point, but second lowest K rate, um, second highest uh, ISO, second, or I'm sorry, highest on base percentage. Uh, they're just crushing righties. And Cologne is getting smoked by righties. Sixth highest average exit velocity against them this year. Uh, Fangraphs has them at 51% hard contact. It's like it just lines up perfectly for the Red Sox. So yeah. I'd go all the way. Like even Sandy Leone for 2,700, I think, is probably where I'd stop it. But no problem with Jackie Bradley batting yeah. ninth either. No, I, I don't. You can go any direction you want with the Red Sox, and I think it's fine. Yeah, and then no Porcello for me. Just too expensive. Um, good park for hitting. Like, I, I rarely play Porcello anyways. I think he's a better real-life pitcher than DFS pitcher. Yeah. Would you do, like, a 2-3-4-5 stack for the Rangers? Chu, Profar, Mazzara, Gallo? Yeah, I mean, I don't I don't mind it. Those guys, um, Chu, Mazzara, and Gallo, all can hit for power. And, like I said, good park. So, I get it. Yeah. I think I just probably won't get to it. You would be a lot more likely to get to it with a bunch of lineups than I would. Gotcha. All right. Brewers and Pirates. This one's a sleeper, kind of. 4.1 run implied total for the Brewers. 3.9 for the Pirates. It's a 53% chance to win for the Brewers. Uh, Junior Guerra going for Milwaukee. Nick Kingham going for Pittsburgh. I like both of these guys here. Uh... Guerra is a guy I think I'll have like an okay amount of as a pay down option. Kingham, you know, you got to pay a little bit more, but I think they're in relatively similar spots. Uh, their prices are flip flopped on DK. Guerra, the more expensive pitcher, Kingham down uh, below him. I think Kingham is probably the best uh, SP2 option if you're looking to pay down. I mean, certainly in the conversation, just. So he came out of the minors and threw seven innings, nine Ks against the Cardinals in his first start. So that's going to get the attention of a lot of people. But he also threw 98 pitches, which I really like to see. Yeah. Um, and maybe that's just because he was going really well. Maybe he was supposed to pitch like 85 and they just gave him another inning or whatever. But um, yeah, so he looks impressive. 14.3% swinging strike rate in that start is very encouraging. Now he gets the Brewers, who um, it's not a cakewalk with Yelich and Travis Shaw, but um, Kingham's certainly a guy I'll be looking deeper into as the day goes on. And while I, I, I don't really want him, if he's going to be super chalk, yeah. um, he's definitely in play for 6,800. Yeah, it's, it's weird. Like, Kingham, 8,000 8, on FanDuel, Guerra, 7,200. And then Guerra, 7400 on DK, Kingham, 6800 So $1,200 cheaper on DraftKings for Kingham compared to FanDuel. You don't see that all that often. So, uh, yeah, Kingham looks like a really nice play. I'm play for me. I could get to a top four Pirates stack, but really I don't see this game uh, as an offense game. No, I, I'm probably not playing any hitters here besides maybe a Yelich or Shaw. If... If I don't end up on Kingham and he's going to be like the chalk SP2, then it might be a good idea to take a bat against him. So Yelich or Shaw is where I'd go. Um, but at this point, probably more likely to play Kingham. I'm with you there. Uh, White Sox and Twins. White Sox, 3.8 run implied total. Twins, 5 run implied total. 62% chance to win for the Twins. Carson Fulmer going for Chicago, Jose Barrios going for Minnesota. Uh, Barrios is probably my, him and Hap will be my two main starters on FanDuel. Uh, and then Barrios would probably be my number one on DK. I uh, just really, you know, I like the matchup. I like Barrios in general. Um, I like the implied total of only 3.8 for the White Sox. So I'll have a lot of Barrios along with uh, a twin stack, which I think is probably the second best stack of the night for me. Yeah, I like Barrios here. 9800 kind of an awkward price. 
Um, I obviously prefer Garrett Cole ahead of him, uh, but you're going to have to pay the price on DK. It's $2,600 difference, so yeah. um, that's at least a couple batters that you could pay up for. Um, but yeah, I like him. He just dominated this team. Seven innings, 11 strikeouts on April 12th. Uh, I don't th- expect the same from him. The White Sox actually have pretty good numbers against righties, surprisingly. Um, is Moncada going to be back for this game? You know, I have him in, but I haven't looked into anything. Look That's what I have too, because that that probably makes a difference for me too, just because he's been red hot against right-handed pitching. Um, so that's a little bit of a downgrade for Barrios if he's back. Uh, I don't think it's a super easy matchup for Barrios. Uh, I don't know. I mean, you probably like him a little bit more than me. What's his price on on Fanduel? Eighty four hundred. Yeah, so he's $200 I like that. Dollars cheaper than Joey Lucchesi. Yeah, three hundred dollars so, more expensive than Fulty. Yeah, so pricing quite a bit different between the two sites tonight. So it's going to be site specific, um, but I do think Barrios makes sense on DK. You don't see him too much under ten K, and there are some strikeouts specifically at the bottom of the order with Castillo and Tim Anderson, and definitely Adam Angle as well. Yeah, I'm I'm going to end up with a ton of uh, ton of Barrios, especially if Moncada ends up being out. Uh, twin stack, like I love everybody. Uh, Carson Fulmer's bad. Steamer's five point eight two projected FIP is just crazy atrocious for a starter. Uh, I like Dozier. I love Maurer and Kepler and Eddie Rosario and Logan Morrison. Even in the seven spot, you know, has some pop. Um, Eduardo Escobar. I don't love the price on Fanduel. It's the same as it is on DK. But on DK, you could run the whole line out if you'd like. Yeah, it's uh, about as good of a spot as the Twins could ask for. Fulmer is top 10 in average exit velocity against lefties this year. And he's going to face eight of them, with Dozier probably being the only righty in the lineup. Yep. So I prefer one through five, but Morrison for 3,100 is also a guy I really like. Um, He's crushed righties this year. And Kepler, even Joe Maurer for 3,600. Uh, he's not a guy people like to play, but he's just been good. And it's not all about home runs. Like, yeah, home runs are great, but doubles are nice too. And the last time I said that, I think he homered. So <laughs> maybe maybe we'll do that again. But yeah, I like the twin stack a ton. Uh, more great hitting weather, wind blowing out, and 70 degrees against a bad pitcher. I want to see what Maurer's slash line is versus righties in the last three years. Yeah, 125 ISO. That's crazy. 374 on base percentage. That's just... He's going to get on. Yeah. That's for sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to have a ton of twins. They'll probably be my second most popular stack. And Barrios will probably be either first or second in terms of exposure for me from the pitching side. Yeah. I get it. I'm a little bit lower on Barrios than you, I think. Yeah, um, I would have less of him on DK and just because of pricing and where other people are. Yeah. But on FanDuel, he's just he's in a great spot. For sure. Uh, Royals and Tigers. Royals mm. 4.5 run implied total. Tigers 4.1. It's a 54% chance to win for the Royals. Ian Kennedy going for Kansas City. Francisco Liriano going for Detroit. Um, I don't want Liriano... You can talk me into Kennedy as a pay down option on FanDuel. You could talk me into Kennedy as a second starter on DK, but I'm rarely excited about having Ian Kennedy. He's just kind of there. Yeah, I'm not on either of these pitchers either. Uh, like, more good hitting weather, and Liriano can get very wild, can give up a lot of hard contact, especially to righties. And one guy that I am very, very interested in is Jorge Soler. He ranks fifth um, in average exit velocity against lefties this year. 97.7 miles per hour, 25 batted ball events against left-handed pitching. So just smoking them. He's going to bat second or third probably. And he's probably going to be 5% owned. So love Soler. Um, And then maybe a mini stack with Salvador Perez. I like a lot. Now I'm with you there. Uh, you can get to a really nice 
Royal stack. Um, you know, Liriano against righties is not going to be all that strong. I'm fine no. with Merrifield, Solaire, Salvador Perez, Cuthbert. Like, I think that's a really nice four-man stack on DK. If you want to go five and grab Moose Tacos, that's cool, too. Um, okay, being able to get a catcher against a lefty at 3,600 is pretty nice. Yeah. I hear your dogs in the background. Yeah, I wish that I didn't. <laughs> but, you know, that's not my choice right now, unfortunately. Do you, do, do you like anything from Detroit's side? Because, I mean, for me, it's just maybe Leonis Martin. Yeah, he's okay. He's got a questionable tag, though, I'm seeing. Um, I, yeah, I, I probably won't have any Tigers. 4.1 run in Plato. I probably should. I don't think Ian Kennedy's any good. Um... <laughs> But I don't love the pricing of the Tigers. Probably not a spot I'll have a lot of. Yeah, I'm I'm always one for stacking against Ian Kennedy, but I don't really see it for this lineup for the Tigers. Um, so if they go off, then whatever. One percent of the field will be ahead of me, but <laughs> not crazy about the Tigers stack. No, I'm with you. Cardinals and Cubs. Uh, Cardinals 4.3 run implied total. Cubs 4.3 run implied total. That's 50-50. Miles McCollis going for St. Louis. Jose Quintana going for Chicago. Uh, I like both of these guys. I prefer Quintana, um, particularly on DK, where he's actually cheaper than McCollis. So no problems using these guys. I'll have a decent amount of both, probably. Um, I just like these guys, and Quintana is good. He's gonna have some a, a tough matchup here, getting you know seven straight righties out of yeah. the gate. But if he can navigate that, uh, it could be a decent night for him. Yeah, just seven. He's gonna get seven righties that all have power. Some really big power, like Martinez and Ozuna, <clears throat> Yadi Molina, Paul DeJong. Like all these guys have a lot of power. So I think I'm avoiding Quintana. It is a good price for him. He's going to have some really good starts like he did last time out. Uh, I don't think this is going to be one of them. So the Cardinals have disappointed a lot lately, but I just I don't see Quintana getting through this game cleanly uh, with all these righties. So I'm sort of avoiding Quintana. I think he might be chalky on DK for 7,600. Yeah. And um, I'm more likely to go with uh, Jose Martinez or uh, Cheap Ozuna or something like that. Okay. Um, I'm just taking a look at uh, Quintana's career numbers. Not that big of a spread between his ex-fit versus lefties and versus yeah. righties. So that makes me a little happier. Does give up a little bit more hard contact to righties than lefties, but nothing too egregious. No crazy home run numbers or anything. So yeah. I'm not as worried about it as like maybe I should be. So I'll have a, a little bit of exposure to Quintana and McCullis. I don't have a preference really to either of them on FanDuel. Uh, McCullis five hundred dollars cheaper, which I think is like sort of offsets their talent gap in my opinion. Uh, from a hitter perspective, I won't have any Cubs. Uh, they just they're not grading out really well. Um, yeah. From a Cardinals perspective, I think Ozuna looks like the best option. Um, he'll probably pop up for me as a couple one offs. Yeah, I more on the Cardinals one-offs. Not really on McCullis either. Just kind of a awkward price for him. Yeah, um, he's he's been okay. Uh, I just don't want to pay 8K if he was like down in the Kingham price range. I would probably consider him, but I don't think I'm going to get to him at that price. No, I'd That's... rather pay down and take like Zach Wheeler or something. Yeah, me too. Uneventful game. By Cardinals Mets or by Cardinals Cubs, Padres and Dodgers. Padres 3.7 run implied total. Dodgers four. It's a 54% chance to win for the Dodgers. Uh, Joey Lucchesi going for San Diego. Walker Bueller going for Los Angeles. Uh, Lucchesi, the fifth most expensive pitcher on FanDuel. You should not be rostering him. Uh, you should, however, be rostering the guy on the opposite side. Uh, I like Walker Bueller a lot here. Um, he's a guy that I would definitely be looking at on DK as either a first starter or a second starter, depending on how much salary you want to step, spend. And uh, Bueller will be one of my main quote-unquote pay-down options on FanDuel. 
Uh, he'll probably have the third most exposure for me after Hap and Berrios. Yeah, I like Bueller. Uh, 8,600, he's probably worth the price based on what he did in his first start and the matchup against the Padres, which is great. Uh, oh, Bueller started twice. Man, I, must, I must have missed the, the second one. Um, but Must have happened on the weekend. Yeah, it did. <laughs> Uh, I didn't play that much on the weekend, but uh, so he's been good both starts. Swinging strike rate isn't where I'd want to see it just yet, but um, I mean, 8,600 against the Padres, like I have no issue. The Padres are awful against right-handed pitching, highest K percentage. Um, like Bueller could certainly do what he's done before, go five or six innings, strike out six guys, and that's perfect for 8600 um so i like him uh, i think i prefer kingham with when you're including the price right now okay uh, but i have no issue with on dk at least so um, yeah, i'm fine with there's that. a yeah there's an 1800 dollars price tag difference i'd like between those two yeah and then i like lucchesi actually um yeah, so yeah. outside of the hard contact against right you, you don't like him no not at all go ahead yeah I don't, think he's, I don't think he's going to be owned at all. But outside of the hard, hard contact against righties, he's been really good. Uh, over 24.5% K percentage against both sides. He's top 30 in the MLB in whiffs for swing, which I put a lot of weight into. Uh, he can definitely miss bats. There's, I mean, it's not a perfect matchup against the Dodgers, but it is a good park. And he's going to be a guy to look at for 8,300 on DK. I'll probably be alone or somewhat alone on this one. He'll be super low owned, but I think he's pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and disagree. Uh, that's, the that's fact fine. that he's the fifth most expensive on pitcher on FanDuel is ludicrous to me. I don't even know how that happens. Um, he grades out really poorly, <laughs> arguably the worst of anybody on the slate for me relative to his price. Um, I, like, I, don't, I don't have a problem with him as a pitcher, I think I just have a problem with his price point. Um, like, I'd be more likely to have him if he was priced like Liriano on DK, <laughs> oddly enough. They have yeah. a, their projections at, in my stuff. Uh, Lucchesi basically has the same overall projection as Liriano. Oh, I much, much prefer Lucchesi, even like point per dollar. Uh, yeah, well, like, I would prefer neither of them, uh, given, well, you, given their current salaries. But Got to play the cards you dealt, though, so... Yeah, I'm gonna fold the cards that Joey Lucchesi deals me. So we can we'll see how this shakes out. We could talk about that. Wind's blowing in, Monday. and it's only 55 degrees. Yeah, let me look at the weather here. Padres Dodgers. Do, do, do. Wait, what did you say the temperature was? 55. I've got 71. Ooh, right now? No, at nine o'clock tonight. Okay, I'm, I guess this one is just wrong. I'll refresh. Let's see. Or mine's wrong. <clears throat> Actually, it just went up a degree. So <laughs> Interesting. I'm still seeing 54. Whatever. Um, You're looking at the Dodgers and the Padres, right? Yeah. Okay, just, I mean, 54. Like, are you looking at the humidity or the dew point by any chance? No, temp, temp 54. Because yeah, the dew point's 54. Interesting. <clears throat> that's why I was asking. I was like, okay, you were just looking at the wrong line. That's weird to me. Um, how could we be getting weather so differently? <laughs> God, that's terrible. Anyway, uh, don't listen to Jake. Don't play Luchez. He sucks. <laughs> I'm kidding. He's good, but don't play him because his salary is too high. He might, he might make his way into the spotlight pitchers. We'll see. Uh, You'll yeah, know. That would be the ultimate, like, F you to me. You should do it. <laughs> I mean, you might like I might consider playing him, so I got to put him in the spotlight pitchers if I'm gonna consider him. Now I got to pay attention to the stupid Padres game. Okay, <laughs> I don't want any Padres hitters. Uh, I'm fine stacking against Lucchesi <laughs> with the Dodgers, Taylor, Kike Hernandez, Kemp, Austin Barnes. I would grab those four guys. They're all super cheap. Kike twenty four hundred, Kemp twenty five hundred, Austin Barnes twenty one hundred, uh, Chris Taylor thirty one hundred. You can get a really cheap Dodger stack here. Normally, I don't like running into uh, Petco with a four-run implied total, but if you need to pay down for a stack, 
there are four guys you can get on the Dodgers that are super cheap. Yeah, I mean, I think Kike Hernandez makes sense. Um, Barnes makes sense on DK for 2800 at a catcher position that, you know, you can save some money there. Yeah. If you're not playing the GOAT, Lucchesi, uh, I don't, I don't know that I'm in love with the stack. I mean, it would probably be Taylor, Kike, and then Austin Barnes, just as no camp for you, respective one offs. Yeah, I, I guess he's fine. I don't know. I, I think I feel Lucchesi like camp is actually fits your pretty profile good. here, like perfectly. No, he, he definitely is a good one off. I, I just looked over him, uh, but I, I just think Lucchesi's good, and it's a good park, and some wind blowing in if. This is correct, which it may not be. Yeah. But um, yeah, I, might, I just think Lucchesi's good. I might use Kemp as my Diddy Dong guy tonight. Yeah. Just for like the 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 impact of it all. I mean, he's got a decent, you know, righty lefty matchup for Kemp. Uh, I don't care what the park is, like, <laughs> you know, that fits him perfectly. If he's going to do anything, he's for sure. Dong. Yeah. So. Yeah. I don't mind it. Yeah, I might do it just to. Just to troll you, because if he goes yard, oh god, I might get a Matt Kemp jersey just for Monday. <laughs> well, it'll just be a complete game with one run earned, so that's fine. I don't want us both to succeed here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, D-backs and Astros. Diamondbacks, 3.7 run implied total. Astros, 5.1. Is this legit? Okay, 65% chance to win for the Astros. Chris Medlin going for Arizona? Garrett Cole yeah. for Houston? Um, I didn't notice that before. Yeah, That's Medlin. That's crazy. So, former Brave. That's the reason that it's uh, giving me incredible pause. Medlin was uh, a fixture of the Braves <clears throat> well, bullpen for a bit. Um, I like Chris Medlin, but uh, you shouldn't use him here. Uh, I don't like Cole, and I don't know why. 3.7 run implied total for the Diamondbacks. Super low. Like I'm not worried about the Diamondbacks at all. I don't know if it. I don't know what it is, but like, Cole is just not getting the respect for me today, and he has in the past. That's what's really crazy. Uh, I don't know why I'm off of Cole tonight, but I'm not really on him. I love Cole. Uh, Diamondbacks are fifth in K percentage against. Um, oh no, that's I'm looking at lefties. I was still on Lucchesi. But uh, I'm not worried about the Diamondbacks. They're ninth in K percentage against righties. Um, On-base percentage is decent. Um, I'm not seeing anything overly concerning on the Diamondbacks side. You're worried about Goldschmidt and Pollock, but not as much against righties. And Souza, if he's going to be in the lineup, that is K central right there against a righty. Um, so Cole's just been unbelievable this whole season and I think it continues here not too worried about the park with him I, he's got easily the most K upside on the slate I think I would so, agree with you there 12-4 he, he's worth it maybe a little bit overpriced but in, con in the context of the slate like I certainly get taking a bunch of strikeouts with Cole here yeah it's I'm, I'm really surprised how little I like him um I'd be more likely to have him on DK, I think, than FanDuel, just because of Hap's price. Uh, mm -hmm. I think him and Hap are relatively neutral, dollar for dollar on DraftKings. But Hap is at such a discount on FanDuel that it makes Cole look worse by association. Um, so that's that's just sort of my like if if Hap were eleven or ten one or something, then I'd have more Cole. I think I said that same thing when I talked about Hap. Yeah. Um... Uh, DK, I much, much prefer Cole, so I agree there. Yeah. Uh, so Chris Medlin, just like reading up on some stuff about him from AAA. This is from ArizonaSports.com. They end their story about him being brought up with. For AAA Reno this season, Medlin has gone 0-3 with a 6 ERA and 4 starts. Um, so, yeah, that's why you're seeing a 5-run total on the road for the Astros. Medlin has been bad, and then now he's going to face – the Astros, who are good. I'm so sad. Um, he was so good for the Braves for a little bit, but his just his and, arm just kept exploding. And the Royals, he was good with the Royals when they won their World Series. So, I mean, Astros stack definitely in play here. Like one through five, I like the most, obviously. But um, 
I think they're going to go a little bit under owned uh, when you're comparing them to the Yankees or the Red Sox. So. Yeah, uh, Astro stack is probably you know tied with the Twins for me. Springer, Altuve, Correa, Gurriel, Josh Reddick, Bregman. If you want McCann, go for it. Uh, those first five guys on FanDuel, I'm going to have like an overwhelming amount of. Prices are just too low. Yeah, so for me it would be Yankees 1A, Red Sox 1B, and then the Astros, Twins, and who was the other one we talked about? Um, I don't remember who my fifth one. Oh, we haven't talked about them yet. Yeah. Um, but it's the Angels, so Angels would be down there as well. Um, so I love the Astros. I love the top four with Guriel, just weirdly fifteen hundred dollars cheaper than the top three guys on DK. Um, but I love all these Astros. So not much else to say. Last time Medlin pitched in the majors, two years ago next week. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be a very great return for him. I hope it is because I, I, you know, I ride for him as a former Brave, um, particularly as a former Brave that, like, got real good for a hot minute. Um, I forgot that he went to the Royals, but that makes sense because of the way the structure was in Kansas, Kansas City became like uh, Braves West for a bit <laughs> um, yeah I'm just I'm gonna have a bunch of Astros uh, I think George Springer might end up being one of my spotlight hitters today didn't get a chance to write that before this show so I can't I can't claim those yet um, okay. and I don't want any Diamondbacks yep no Diamondbacks for me if anything it's coal yeah if I thought Cole were going to be even remotely chalky, I could probably get to like a, a contrarian Diamondback stack, but I don't think he's going to be owned enough to want to roster the Diamondbacks. Yeah. All righty. Two more. I can't spell athletics. Athletics. There we go. A's and Orioles. A's 5.1 run implied total. Orioles 4.4. Um... It's a 56% chance to win for the A's. Daniel Mengden going for Oakland. Andrew Kashner going for Baltimore. Um, Kashner's a no-go. I think Mengden looks pretty decent as a, as a pay-down option. Uh, but nothing looks better than Matt Joyce leading off for 2500 on FanDuel. <laughs> Again, yeah, that's Andrew Kashner and his awfulness. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Um... So the three guys that I like the most on Oakland are the lefties, Joyce, Lowry, Olsen. Olsen for under 4K on DraftKings is a really nice price for him. Yep. I think he should be like a 1,000 more against Kashner. So take advantage of that if you need a $3,900 first baseman. Um, I don't know that I'll end up full stacking the A's, but uh, I certainly understand it with the run total and Kashner. Like, <laughs> he's Kashner. Like, they, he had a stretch last year where it was really frustrating to stack against him. But I don't think he's even that same pitcher this year. Yes. He's, he's just not very good. Imagine um, being the A's and being like, oh, wait, we got to face Chris Tillman yesterday, and now we get Andrew Kashner? This shit's going to be batting yeah. practice. Well, it's going to be an upgrade for pitching for the Orioles. There's no doubt about that. Kashner is not Chris Tillman. Otherwise, I would be saying put in every A in your lineup like I was saying yesterday about the Angels. Um, so Cashier is better than Tillman, but not by a ton. Yeah, I'm going to stack up this game from a hitting side on like both sides of the coin. Uh, definitely like the A's, especially Olsen and Joyce. Uh, Joyce 2,500 on FanDuel, Olsen 2,800. I can't pass that stuff up, and then I'll happily grab some other guys just to fill out the stack, but... I really like an Orioles stack on FanDuel. Uh, Jace Peterson still priced under 3000 Chris Davis. Um, Orioles Chris Davis, obviously. Not the Chris Davis that didn't hit a home run yesterday for you. Uh, <laughs> Chris Davis at 2600 Pedro Alvarez at 2300 You can get a lot of power out of the Orioles lineup um, for very cheap. I don't... Like, they're a very high-variance stack to have today because of the way, like, Davis and Alvarez sort of operate. But 
I'm going to end up having them as a cheap stack. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't think I'll end up on any Orioles. They're pretty awful against righties uh, amongst the league lead in K percentage. So they're fourth against right-handed pitching. They're bottom 10 in ISO. They're bottom one in on-base percentage. So just not very a lot of solo encouraging dongs. for me. What's that? A lot of solo dongs. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I mean, you can make a case for Magnin here, 6,400 yeah. as a pivot to Kingham or from Kingham or any of these other cheap guys. So he's in play for me tentatively. I'm not expecting a big performance, but I think he could be okay against a team that's been pretty awful against right-handed pitching. 60-degree weather, wind blowing out to right center, 12 miles an hour right now, so... I might have a sneaky amount of this game. I think it'll probably go relatively underlooked because it's the A's and the Orioles. Yeah, I, I don't like. I think the A's maybe like the fifth or sixth highest owned stack tonight, which At means maybe. they'll be under ten percent uh, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I I like a lot of this. Matt Joyce is definitely going to be in the spotlight hitters. Um, kind of has to be. Yep. Final game. Mariners and Angels. Mariners 3.9 run implied total. Angels 4.3. It's a 54% chance to win for the Angels. Mike Leak going for Seattle. Garrett Richards uh, going for the Angels. Don't want Leak at all. Uh, Garrett Richards is a pretty decent play on FanDuel. He's just kind of in this... Like, McCullis, Richards, Guerra, Ian Kennedy are basically all the same guy, and they're all separated by $400. Uh, I won't be able to, like, distinguish him out of anything, uh, but I don't have a problem with using him. I'd be more likely to have some of the Angels' bats, although I'm a little concerned with their implied total. Oh, yeah, we said that uh, Tillman faced the A's yesterday. He faced the Angels, so I, I didn't even... That went completely over my head. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. All right, so... I mean, I, still Cashner is better than Tillman, so it doesn't change that much. But uh, So I think this is another really, really good matchup for the Angels. Uh, Leak, so we stacked the White Sox against him yeah. last week, or was it a week before, because of how high his exit velocity was against right-handed bats. And it's still up in the top five this year. Um, Leak's just getting pounded with these reverse splits by righties. So Kinsler, Trout, Upton, Pujols, that's not how you want to start if you're getting crushed by righties. Certainly not. Um, Angleton Simmons for 3700 I love him as a shortstop. He's going to be very low-owned. Uh, yeah, I love the Angels. They're probably going to creep their way up my stack rankings as the day goes on because I don't think they'll be very high-owned. I'm with you there. Uh I don't think they'll be super high on because of that implied total, but I like those top four guys. I like Simmons. I like Otani. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not the most cost-efficient stack, but that's fine with me. Um, I think they're in a really nice spot here. Uh, no no trouble uh, stacking up against Mike Leak, and I don't want any part of the Mariners. Dude, Leak, Leak is awful he's against righties. Very not good against righties. Like, I mean, he's not he's very got, good just in general. Yeah. I mean, he strikes out more guys than Cologne, but he's got some Bartolo Cologne contact numbers against righties so he just looks like half of bartolo Colon. yeah exactly <laughs> uh so trout probably maybe outside of the yankees guys one of my favorite plays on the entire night and he i mean trout always gets ownership but he's going to be like 12 or 15 percent i think yeah so that's nice <laughs> so Mike Leake is billed on fan graphs as 5'10", 170. Cologne, 5'11". You guess, the, you guess his weight on fan graphs. 280? 285. Yeah. And I assume that's low because they probably don't want to bill him as 5'11", 315. Oh, yeah. He, <laughs> this isn't a wrestling match. He is a pulling guard, that guy is. Ooh, boy. 285. Yeah. He's got to cut weight to get to the heavyweight limit. I know. God. <laughs> anyway, roster angels. So, I you, did a couple do you like of Garrett, Do you like Garrett Richards? You should probably talk about him quick. I, he's like, I'll, I'll have a little bit of him, but 
you could throw a dart at McCollis, Richards, Guerra, Kennedy, Mangdon, Liriano for me, at least on FanDuel, and it's all the same person. Pavetta on DK, like you, you can have any of them. I don't, I don't have any preferences for these guys. They're all basically exactly the same. Yeah, I mean, seventy seven hundred. It's a good price for Richards. Um, it's just a terrible matchup. We talked about it with Manaya yesterday and paid the price if you played Manaya. I mean. He got you 10 points, but you're probably not going to have big outings against the Mariners. They just don't strike out, and you need those strikeouts on DK. So Richards is going to be off the table for me, yeah. um, and then obviously not playing Mike Leak. No. McCollis, Richards, Guerra, and Ian Kennedy, their overall projection today is separated by 0.8 points, <laughs> and there's $400 separating them. Like I do, They're all the same person. <laughs> Yeah. All right, I ran some crunches before we started. We'll take a look at DK. And it's lots of spread. So it'll be interesting to see this if it, if it ever loads. You would think that uh, doing this in advance would be helpful, but apparently it is not. It's just just spinning. Just spinning. Almost there. All right, there we go. So pitching-wise, I ran 100 lines. It's 39% Berrios, 22% Walker Bueller, 21% Quintana, 20% Kingham, 20% Cole, and then a little bit of uh, Kittredge, who is going to fall off the table there. Uh, I, re I adjusted his uh, innings projection down after we took a look at him. So a little bit of Ian Kennedy, but it's mostly going to be Barrios, Bueller, Quintana, Kingdom, and Cole. Um, so give me give me two guys you're looking at right now. Try Cole and uh, Kingham. I think that might be a chalky pairing. All right, I've got three lines with him with those guys. Okay. It's a Astros Pirates stack. Okay. It's an Astros Orioles stack, and then an Astros Giant stack. Yeah, I don't really like that. Can you go by stacks? Can you sort by stacks? I wish. Okay. It's just <laughs> I want to see what the like what the Yankees five man stacks gonna look like for pitching, or like the Red Sox. Oh, so. okay. So I I can sort of do that. We I can grab a Yankee and they'll probably be coming. Yeah, with it. So. Just like Aaron Judge or someone. Yeah, I'll grab Stanton, Stanton. first. Yeah. He's at the top. Um, Wheeler, Kennedy, Barrios. Oh, you can do. Oh, you can do Barrios Bueller. Barrios Bueller with a Yankees twin stack. Yeah, so there's definitely ways to get the Yankees stack in. Andrew R is probably the key to a lot of that. 3600, as is Brett Gardner. Uh, he's like weirdly cheap on DK always. Yeah. Um. Barrios, yeah. Barrios Kingham with a Twins and Yankees stack looks really nice. Yeah, that's nice. Um, so you shouldn't be building lineups you don't like. I think we talked about that before the show. You you should really like your lineups tonight. <clears throat> like, I've made a couple that I'm really liking. Uh, hitting's awesome tonight. So just want to get just enough from your pitchers. Unless it's Garrett Cole, then you want to get 30. Yeah. Uh, Barrios and Bueller would be the direction I would focus on for uh, if I were building like a one-off DK lineup. You could do a lot of like Twins, Red Sox with Barrios and Bueller, and I think that's pretty nice. Um, but you, you've got a ton of options. Uh, there's not really anything limiting you tonight to have what you want. You should be able to build something that you're really happy with. Yeah. And then on FanDuel... Um, Pitchers for me, super spread out. Normally I have one guy that's dominating. It's not the case here. Bueller, Wheeler, Hap, Berrios, Quintana, Junior Guerra, they're all just going to be spread out. And I'd imagine that's going to be even more interesting as the day goes on. So I don't have anybody that I'm really focusing on. I'm just kind of uh, getting a lot of options out tonight. Yeah, I get it. All right. Got to plug one last time. Uh, playline.com slash r slash awesomeo tonight is the night um, this contest is taking place 
there's still a ton of available entries. It's the awesomeo.com presents the $1 million perfect line bonus, $5,000 guaranteed tournament, 2K to first. You need to pick the points, rebounds, and assists for James Harden, Anthony Davis, and Kevin Durant. Uh, we've seen some overlay in the past, so this is a really good tournament to try to get into. 2K for first. You could take on a bunch of us uh, from the awesomeo.com staff as well, along with some celebrities, you know, uh, Michael Bisbing has lines in there, Riddick Bowe, uh, Chael Sonnen. Um, so it's kind of kind of fun to see their names sort of popping up. Uh, highly recommend you do that. Yeah, like I said, playline.com slash R slash Osmo. You get a free $5 when you sign up through that link. Uh, you also get a bonus on your first deposit. So please check that out. Um, highly recommend you get in that and take us on. Talk some smack if you want, if you beat us. Uh, try to beat the boss. Uh, he took down the first one, so yeah. <laughs> good luck with that. Jake, talk about hockey. Yeah, two games again tonight. Uh, we've got a few more days of hockey with all these series being tied or 2-1, so we'll get a few more of these two-game slates. Um, I've been enjoying them. They uh, haven't done great the last couple days, but before that, they've been really profitable, so it just means i got to dig in harder today, and there will be the normal two articles out one covering a couple stacks that I like, and then one covering uh, some top-tier skaters and some value skaters. So, um, yeah, come check that out, and just an excuse to watch some playoff hockey. There you go. Two NBA games tonight. Uh, Chris and I should be talking about those for a bit in the live stream, whatever time that starts, considering the NBA games go off at 8 o'clock. So we don't know what that schedule is going to look like yet, but I'll talk to Chris. Uh, Warriors and Pelicans, and then uh, the one that actually matters, Rockets and Jazz tipping off at 10.30. That's going to be a great game. Uh, Jazz looking to take a 2-1 series lead and uh, maybe get up on a team that nobody thought was going to lose here. So check out NBA. We'll have NBA content up on the site. Um, get into that Playline contest. Check out Jake's hockey stuff. Check out all our baseball stuff. We're churning out content like crazy people. It's a good yeah. time to be a part of the awesomeo.com crew. So... That's all I've got. Uh, have a good weekend, everybody. Um, you as well, Jake. Yeah, and, you too. Uh, we'll talk to you again as our duo Monday morning. Best of luck, guys. Good luck.